Ah. Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong and welcome to the back office. As the booby Cortex can access a CAN bus, there's no reason on earth it can't access a vehicle um, onboard diagnostics. So I want to build it into this connector and I was having a look at this earlier and although it won't just sort of jump in nice and easy because it, it obscures the sort of mounting screws. If I put the USB on it and effectively mount it, say at 45 degrees, it actually does shut. It does shut on there like that. If I remove the USB, you can see it mounts in that way. And to me, that's good enough, because if, it, well, if it's good enough for me, it's good enough for you. And what I noticed is when I had a quick look on my uh, te telephone phone. We only need three wires. We need the CAN uh, high, which is pin six, the CAN low pin 14, and signal ground pin five. So five, six, and 14, three wires. And I happen to have three wires. So let's just crack on and put it all together. And what have we got? Bits of this, a bits of that. I do like this kind of project. It just goes together without too much faffery. You don't want too much faffery in your life, do you? Let's get our little grippy grippers. I do find when I'm tinning wire ends, a pair of grippy grippers are often what I need. They're the solution to whatever my problem. Firm grip, no slip. Right, let's twist those up nicely. Ah, oh, how, how did I make that one? It's uh, half term now, that's why you can probably hear, hear the sound of screaming kids. It's a different sound than term time screaming kids, but not too different. Let's trim that last little bit, there we go. We just shove them in our handy gripper, handy gripper. I don't know if they've actually got a real name. Helping Hands, I think. To be honest, half the time they're not particularly helpful, but this time they are. Tin, tin, tin. I got it tinned and ting. Boom, booyah, we're ready to go. Let's get that out of the way. So we know we want, um, ground is pin five, so. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. So this is pin five. So actually it does have, it does have, I can see these traces. So it does sort of imply it has a kind of a thing going on. I was just gonna solder straight to the actual pin, but I think this is just as good. A bit of a furry, bit of a furry end there. I'll zoom in so you can have a look. See what see what see what I can see through these whole pins. You can see this that one actually got a trace here, going to pin one, two, three, four, and five. I wonder what pin four is then on the standard. I'm just going to have a quick look. Pin four is apparently chassis ground. So I wouldn't have thought chassis ground and signal ground would ideally have been the same, but that's fine. So we've got this pin six doesn't seem to go anywhere, um, and that's no good because that's our can high. So we did want that, but that's okay. We'll just solder one, two, three, four, five. See, I just did a sanity check there just to make sure I wasn't soldering it onto the wrong thing. In fact, just gonna twist this around a bit. Get in there, get in there, my san. It's not amazing, but it'll stay. And the next one is pin 14, which I think is opposite. 16, 15, 14, immediately opposite. So, again, slightly awkward, but not too bad. Bang, that's it. Technically, that's all we need on the old soldering iron too. I think I've got a bit of a hot glue gun here. I'm just gonna plug that in. So I've got this terrible uh, issue with my hot glue gun where it's, it just doesn't seem to wanna play ball. So, can high, can low, and ground on a booby cortex. Can high, let's show you again. Can high, K 
can low, can ground. And if you flip it over, you'll see it written on the bottom. And if you've got a production board, it'll be a lot clearer than this because this is, of course, a beta board and they tend not to have great quality in this the old silk screen. They, did, they do tend to sort of um, not be as good as the old uh, production boards. I'm not sure why, really. I'm guessing ink is expensive. So can high, which is the red one, which is on six, we want... Um, on the other end, so immediately opposite. Let's connect that up. Nice! And then the can low. Lots of cans here. Let's do the old can can. Do do remember them? What the hell? How does this fit? I'm going slightly mad. Hang on, it looks like it should just fit either way around. There we go. Well, it's fitting now. A fitting end. So I'm not going to use any of those pins on that pin header, so it would be cool to kind of... Uh, find a way to sort of make sure it's glued in but maybe that doesn't matter so much so I suspect it goes in something like that so I'm just gonna put the uh, a blob of hot glue before I put the lid on there we go that's your blob of hot glue let's just get the old lid squanched on It's not totally squanchy. Arr. Oh no, why doesn't that want to shut? It doesn't want to shut because of those other gubbinses. Let's get that in this way. Gonna just uh, turn that round. I think it has to go in this way basically because of the uh, jumpers and things are fouling it. Fine, it's not a problem. Boom! Nice big blob there. Little blob there. Hopefully, won't have to do any rework on this PCB. Not today, anyway. Get that jammed in. Come on, boy. Come on. That will do, pig. Absolutely fine by me. Nice. So there's no strain relief, unfortunately, because you're not going to get the strain relief. But on the other hand, you can unplug the USB. So I don't know. If it was your project, would you uh, shove a load of hot glue in that end or resin or something? Or would you just give yourself that option of changing that USB lead out in the future if necessary? But there you go, that's your booby vortex, booby vortex, booby cortex powered ODB. No, OBD. <laughs> OBD2 dongle onboard diagnostics and there is loads of software online it should talk to this in Linux and Windows there you go I'm just gonna check it again yeah it's pretty firm actually it's firmed up in there quite nicely that's me hope that's been some use to you as ever thanks for watching